Today, Tahiti's getting a facelift and a little bit of a butt lift, sort of. All right, guys, so last video, we did the Escalade glass. We got the brake light hooked up. Um, we got the dash cam installed. We got the window switches fixed, the window regulator switch, the door lock actuator fixed. All this stuff's still working great, and mechanically, we're we're doing pretty good here. Um, today's episode, new bumpers going on, front bumpers going on, the HD grills going on, and I have a new hood going on. I actually have to pick the hood up. I have to go over to Queens to get it because I've been having some pretty bad luck with freight. Every time the hood comes, um, it seems to come with a huge dent in it. So later on, we'll grab the hood, swap that out. But right now, let's head on down to the garage. We'll get to work on those bumpers. So as always, if you're new here, this is my 2004 Chevy Tahoe Z71. It's really nothing special. It's just an old Tahoe with 240,000 miles on it. But uh, this is going to be episode three of the build I'm doing on it. So if you want to kind of get caught up, see the previous two episodes, just click the link at the top of the screen. That'll bring you to my Tahoe playlist. You can get all caught up and then come back here. Um, and everything will probably make a little more sense. But yeah, today we're starting to do kind of the bodywork stuff. We're putting a new rear bumper on, new front bumper, a new front grill, and a new hood. I am doing the HD hood, the HD grill, and the HD front bumper valance. All that stuff's gonna be covered in today's video. But starting out back, I figured this is probably gonna be the easier space to uh, start in at least. Rear bumper, we're just pulling off. We're throwing on a stock replacement piece. I know a lot of you guys probably wanted me to do a uh, Denali Yukon bumper, and I did look into it and I do like the way that looks. The only thing is that those bumpers, they don't come with gray plastic like this. They're black, pretty much just like the aftermarket replacement bumper down here. And I'm really trying to keep all this stuff matching. I don't wanna paint all the rest of the plastic around the truck black. Um, I want it to all look factory stock and you know match at all four corners. So I'm basically just gonna pull this stuff off. We're gonna restore it in another video just so it's not so faded and dull looking. And then this is all gonna get transferred onto this bumper. But yeah, that's my reasoning for not going with the Denali bumper. And uh, from what I researched, this should be a pretty easy install. We got a couple of 21 millimeters holding it down to the tow hitch. And then I think there were a bunch of 18s just securing it to the frame. I already went ahead and pulled off the wiring harness for the turn signal, not the turn signal, the tag lights. And um, that should basically be it. Hopefully this thing just pulls right off.
All right, so the bumper's in. It wasn't as quick as I thought it was going to be, um, but it's in. You know, what it turned out to be, there was a lot of rust. I kind of had to reuse some stuff off of the old bumper. For some reason, the two brackets that the bumper did come with, the threads were a little off from the bolts that were in that came off the old bumper, it felt like they were cross-threading. The impact gun didn't even want to run them down. So I ended up just reusing the two straight brackets off of this bumper. Um, and everything seems to fit and line up pretty good. Like we have an even gap going along the bumper um, all the way across the bottom of the hatch here. The two spaces against the rocker and the ends of the bumper, they're the exact same size. And all the bolt holes lined up without an issue. As for the plastic here, like I said, this is coming off. Uh, the bumper actually has a few marks, like there's a scratch here and there's a chip in the primer here. That was from shipping, and it also came with a chip in the plastic here. But like I said, I'm not using this stuff. I did manage to pull off all the factory gray plastic from this bumper with only breaking one tab. So I'm just gonna epoxy that back on. We'll get these cleaned up, restored, and installed once this is painted. And I am gonna pull this off when it goes to the body shop. So I want everything underneath painted really good. And um, I just have to get some hardware to mount the plate back up because those were brittle and just fell apart. And then I'm gonna reinstall the access for the spare tire um, after the body shop as well. But with all this taken care of, let's uh, spin her around. We'll get to work on the front. What I tell you guys, 2500 HD front end swap going on Tahiti. A lot of you guys kind of suggested that I do the cat eye swap for anybody who doesn't know. That's the, the later year after this style uh, front end on the Silverados. They went to the different front end. You know, it kind of looks like cat eyes. They're thinner headlights. They kind of point up and they go down like that. The grill's totally different. Um, the fenders, yeah, I'm pretty sure the fenders are different. The reason I didn't go for that, it doesn't really make it look like a Tahoe anymore. It kind of makes it look like a weird hybrid kind of thing. Like when people take the F-bodies with the Trans Am and Camaros, some people will swap the Trans Am front end to put it on a Camaro. It kind of reminded me of that. It was a little bit weird. So by going with the, you know, the early 2000s HD front end, it still looks like a Tahoe pretty much. It uses the same exact headlights. The grill is pretty similar, but at the same time, it does look more aggressive. We got this nice mesh on the grill here. Uh, the bumper is a little beefier looking. And the main difference in all this is going to be the upper bumper valance, this plastic piece, and the grill itself. To my knowledge, the little to no uh, <laughs> research that I did on this, it seems like the bumper part is the same part number, whether it's an HD or a 2500 or a 1500. I think the only difference is the plastic up here that's a little bit taller. And you can see that is like that because the grill is a little bit bigger. It kind of goes into the bumper like that. And uh, yeah, in order to accommodate this, we are gonna have to modify the stock bumper mounting points on the front end of the Tahoe here. All right, so the front bumper came off a lot easier than the back one. Um, all the bolts were 15 millimeters. I actually was able to zip them all out with the electric ratchet. And yeah, having these side by side, these bumpers, they do look like they're the same exact part. Like I said, the only difference seems to be the valance up here is much taller. And to accommodate that, we are gonna have to drop the bumper down. And as you can see, had a little rust hiding in here that eventually was just gonna bubble on through. All right, so with everything broken down, we're ready to start modifying stuff. Now, I completely ripped off the old bumper cap like an absolute animal. If you plan on keeping this, um, you're probably gonna have to go behind the bumper and carefully kind of pinch the tabs together to push it through. 
Mine's all scratched up. I don't plan on selling this or doing anything with it, so I just ripped them off. All the tabs are laying on the floor. But with the old bumper off the car, yeah, these do look like they're the exact same part. And the main difference here is gonna be this cap. I took some preliminary measurements here and the, uh, the new cap measured in at around 4.8 inches. The old one is 3.1. So I'm gonna start by lowering these brackets around an inch and three quarters, and we're gonna go from there. And then we have these two brackets on the side that aren't gonna line up with the bumper bracket anymore. So I'm gonna to have to either drop these down, delete them, make a new hole in the bracket in the bumper. I'm not sure what I'm doing with that yet. And then these two side pieces, just from looking on Google, it seems like a lot of people have to notch these out because when the bumper comes down, I think the top of it hits into these. So let's start by, um, Cutting these down, I'm gonna tack them back into place. We'll pop the grill in and see if we can get this thing to line up. All right, so the rough fit is complete. Um, I'm really happy with the way this looks. Everything lines up great. The gap along the bottom of the grill, the bottom of the lights, it's all even. All I did was cut that initial inch and three quarters out of those two brackets, drop them down, and then um, I didn't change anything else. I was able to tweak them after I tack welded them. I kind of bent them slightly up to kind of uh, bring the bumper up a little bit more and close this gap. But uh, yeah, that initial one and three quarters was plenty to get it where I needed it. And then I had to come in and cut some more metal out of the aluminum uh, side pieces because the bumper wouldn't go far enough back. Um, by doing that, I got it in there pretty much right where I want it. And this is by no means secure yet. I still need to figure out how I want to mount uh, the bottom bolts because we have those two bottom bolts that go to the from the bumper to the frame. And now there's literally an inch and three quarter gap between where the bolt needs to connect and the bumper. And the same thing with these side pieces. I have to uh, transfer the brackets over the old bumper and figure out how I want to mount these two bars that kind of support the sides. But other than that, the grill seems to fit pretty good being, you know, a cheap aftermarket how it is. But the only other problem that I'm seeing here, the headlights line up like crap with this grill. I don't know if it's just a cheap aftermarket or they were just off to begin with or something. You know, that's the side that got hit with the poles. So I wonder, that's probably why. It's probably, the adjustment's probably all screwed up. Um, yeah, so I need to adjust that headlight, bring it down. This one isn't as bad. It's just a little kind of tweaked sideways. I got to level it out. But I'm going to go ahead, try to get the rest of this wrapped up, bolted down, see if I could pop the lower valance on. And then I think it's time to go grab our hood.
this hood. <laughs> All right, so yeah, the front end conversion, it's done. HD front end, we got the HD hood, HD grill, HD bumper cap, and this looks great. I love the way that the hood kind of comes up more, goes straight back. We're essentially raising the body line of the truck you know, a little bit towards the front before the hood used to kind of just swoop down. We didn't have all this real estate. It was maybe only about that high. And by uh, lowering the bumper down two inches and going with that taller bumper cap from the HD, we're also lowering the front. So once we actually get this thing raised up and get the wheels sticking out, I think this is gonna look really, really incredible. But yeah, this hood. So yeah, this is a used and abused factory hood. What ended up happening was that I got, um, I originally got a hood from eBay. It shipped from Texas. Long story short, it came here damaged. I rejected the shipment. Found another one that was uh, also aftermarket new, local pickup only. Um, and it was in New York. It was up in Queens, like an hour away. So I decided to buy that one instead. I went and grabbed it, drove it back down here, installed it. And um, it didn't have any dings in it. It looked pretty clean, but the alignment and the quality was just absolute ass um, it seemed like a raindrop could have dinged the top of the hood it was so weak you could press on it it would deflect a lot and the biggest issue was there was kind of like a bulge in it because on this side right where the hood meets the fender it would be nice and flush and aligned back here nice and flush and aligned up here but right towards the middle it would just kind of slightly go up and you can actually stick a finger in between that gap and i could not get it to sit right flatten out it was a huge mess drove back up returned it scoured Facebook Marketplace, found this thing, um, also in New York, a little farther away, it's like an hour and a half. He wanted 160 bucks, he said it had no rust. I got there, I knew it had dings and it was really rough and I'm like, whatever, the money I saved on getting the new hood, I could just have the body work done. But yeah, once I got up there, I pulled the insulation off the bottom and there were quite a few spots that are rusted. Some is gone through, you know, underneath the supports. Um, there are some little spots where it's just surface rust. Basically, I'm gonna have all that fixed. I'm gonna have this all straightened out. But what I do wanna know is, um, should I do the body work myself? Because I've kind of been thinking, uh, these videos have been doing pretty good. And if you guys wanna see how I personally would prep this, get all these things out, make it as smooth as glass before it gets sprayed, give the video a like, leave a comment down below. And I think uh, before this goes to the body shop, I'm not gonna spray the color, I'm not, that crazy. I want this thing to look to match perfectly and be nice and, you know, orange peel free. So I am going to have the body shop shoot the color, but as for all the prep, the priming, the body filler, the rust repair, if you guys want to see it, leave a comment down below and uh, give the video a like. All right. And the last thing I changed off camera here is the grill. Uh, the one I installed was an aftermarket earlier in the video. I hated the way it fit as far as the bow tie went. On the aftermarket grills, they're not allowed to, well, they don't have the trademark to cut the bow tie outline in here. So unfortunately with the emblem, it's gonna sit on top of the chrome and there was like a space here. I hated the way it looked. Uh, so I basically pulled that one off. I found this one at a junkyard and it's in pretty good shape. We are gonna peel this chrome off because this is gonna be painted to body match and probably the perimeter here. Obviously the hood's gonna get fixed and painted. Uh, the bumper cap down here, we gotta smooth down. That's gonna get painted body color along with the bumper. But yeah, this grill fits great. And even going to the, um, the OEM grill over the aftermarket, the headlight over there fits a hell of a lot better. And um, it's still kind of tweaked. When I pulled it out, I noticed that the mounting points are kind of bent back. That's why it was sticking up. And even now looking, I could tell that side is just slightly up higher than this. Headlights getting changed, that doesn't really matter. But yeah, OEM parts, huge, huge improvement over the aftermarket stuff, at least for this uh, body stuff when it comes to these. So definitely if you're doing the swap, try to find a hood. It's OEM, try to find an OEM grill. But as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to see me tackle Tahiti's bodywork, once again, leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll uh, try to find all my old sanding blocks and sandpapers that are buried in the shed. And maybe, uh, I don't know, I might just tackle it myself. Next episode, she's going up. I'm gonna kind of wait on the bodywork stuff if I do decide to do it. Um, I don't want these videos to be this far apart. This wasn't supposed to take this long. Just finding this hood was an absolute pain in the ass. And uh, yeah, we're going to bring her up next time do a little work to the suspension, probably stabilizer bar bushings, links, stuff like that. I need to put some new springs in the back. And um, from there on out, I think it's gonna start coming together. But for now, it's gonna do it for this one. See you guys in a few days.